Okay, I'm doing this video because, well, I don't normally do videos like this, but just to help everybody out with EC5 connectors. I'm going to do one on battery and I'm going to do one on there as well because I don't know how the tracks are sent. Um, just to give people an idea on how to do it because I find that I had problems trying to get all pins in and pushing plastic on. And I find a few little tips that help out, so hopefully it'll help somebody out. So first of all, just take the balance lead out of the way. I normally use electrical tape, can't find it, so grab me. Grab the grab tape a little bit. Then, take a little bit more off because I need it. First job's first. I'll probably fast forward a lot of this. You've got Fury YB Live on your controller. Don't think it really makes an odds, but what you don't want to do is nip the other, as I learnt the hard way, it will arc and scare the life out of you. So hopefully I can do it without getting it. So we'll start with negative, because it's a usual thing for me to do. Just gonna cut through it. I have my bit connected there, the tape's sticking to me. I don't know when I've got all this pair of good snips on earth. Well, that's that bit. There we go. So I've got these ends. That's the end to go in. See, it's pretty thick anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to strip a little bit back. You don't need a great deal stripping back. So I can get that heat shrink off first. There we go, that's that off. That's off. So that should be more than enough time it's done. Right, now I've done that, we'll just quickly take that back out way. That saves you from nipping that, getting solder on it, out like that. Let's get it done. So grab me solder. Right, so first of all we need to tin them. So I've got a little bit of pillai board, I've drilled an hole in it. But we'll just all connect it, makes it a lot easier than trying to get it mole grips and stuff like that. I probably will use them a bit later on, but... Right, let's see if this is up enough. Yeah, it's clean. I'm no expert at soldering, so if people just bear with me, there's a lot of people out there who are screaming at me, you're doing it wrong, but yeah. Yeah, it's an obby. It's only trying to help a few people out if they need it. So I'm just going to tin it all up, get some meat into it, pull a bit more solder out. Just a little bit of heat going to cable. And that should then right. that's tin. Right, after you've tin wire, just before you start doing this, you want to be shoving this on. So I need to be looking for the right side. It's got on it positive and negative. So my negative side there, obviously the black's negative. Push it right back, it's that way, it's done. Right, so then need to get this little hole out, see if you can turn it so you can see it. Right, so I'm going to get closer down here because I'm not wired. So a bit of heat into connector, you're going to want to get it red hot. Reason being it's not going to stay hot for long. Get some solder in there, just a little bit. What I've got to do is try not to have it overflow the sides, which I always do. I don't know why. But, um, but this is the way I find the probably the quickest and best we aren't messing about. Then, when you got it all red hot, get your end in, there we go. I've got it hot enough, seems to have took. Then if you need to, you can fill in a little bit right edges just to fill it up, try not to get it on that spine. It seems to have took. If you want to go and fill the edges in, you can, but as it stands, it's on pretty well. It's not going to go nowhere. That's that. So then we need to get into connector. Now this is the bit where I had loads of problems with uh, when I first started soldering. Yeah, again, I'm not a master at this yet. Go wait till it cools down. So I ripple there and a ripple in there. So what we need to do is knock that through while it's cool. Right. So right. So yeah, again, we've let it cool down. So hold that. Uh, we've let it cool down so the spines don't melt. I'm going to push connector up as far as we can get it. And push it in. And you notice now you've either got a really rag at that wire and pop it in, but you've got a chance of damaging wire and solder and battery. So 
there's been many a ways I've seen people do this. I just use the male end and bosh it in. We get it on there. We're going to get something on here just to give a better area to hit. When we get it on, we're going to push down and hopefully with a couple of wax it should be in. Oh, there we go. Oh, I might have just pushed it through a bit too far. Hopefully, okay, that's clicked back in. So that's now clicked in. And that is in. I might have knocked it a little bit too far through, but as you can see, it's got it. Boom, done. And then it's exactly the same on the other side with live. The uh, reason I put connector on before dot live is so you don't touch the wires and I'll come out, but it's the exact same procedure on the other side. Right, so now I'm going to change this. This is the one I wanted to get in more than anything because this is a connector that I could not find anything about and how to change. So I'm going to change from that to that. And it's as simple as right, pull that one out. And pull that out. Beauty about it, because it's in the car, it don't matter, you know what I mean? Every time I do this, I'm doing it to minimise uh, the wire loss. It's obviously short cables, pressure on them, and cause them to pop off. So all I'm going to do, is because these wires are already tinned, save me some bit of time. I'm just going to eat it all, boom, let's start one off. And then, and it has to go. That, that's that one off. They're already still tinned by Traxxas or whoever makes the SCs for them. Alright, so now I've got to find a connector that's uh, not got them in. We'll have to knock them ones out. I believe that's the right one. So now we're going to solder mail ends on. And it's the exact same process. Only thing different is I won't be using my block for this one unless I can get up here. Oh right, yeah, awesome, I can get up here. So, got two eyes in there, <coughs> they're already tinned. That connector's a bit chewed up, so I'm not using that one. That one's good, so. Uh, yeah, so the wires are already pre tinned. Yet again, uh, I'm not a professional at this, just want to share to make sure every, anybody that struggles knows how to do it. Yeah, so, I'm gonna put that on right away, yeah. Get some solder, about to come over here because we've got a short wire and it's well there. Uh, get some heat into this, it's the exact same process as um, the soldering batteries to be fair. There's not much difference. Apart the connector, it's getting, I think that's the main bit, it's getting the uh, plastic bit on. That's the bit I struggled with most with uh, both of them. Get some heat into it. Get it the right way around, get a spin. Alright, so we're going to get some heat into it. A bit ready with this. Come on, I've got space to get it. Let me move that over there. See if that gives me a bit more space. It's the only thing with solving on cars, it can be a bit of a pain. So we'll get some more heat into it again. And do it without cars. I say, I, I'm, I'm trying to make this lucky as easy as I can. There we go, that's gone in. Put some heat into it. There we go, that should have got. Let's put that down a second. So, as you can see, it's a nice tight fit. Cable goes right up and into it. It's not a bad thing, you're not losing all connection, solder all get your connection. Now, this is the bit that's probably the most important that I had to learn. Spent hours trying to sort it out, is getting them through there it is a pain you, there's a lot of videos of pulling them but your problem with that is you pretty stressed out why yet again you might put wires on the SC so easiest way I've found is yet again get an opposite end and you can get it on I have to put it on beforehand an opposite end how they're meant to be see how that's sat there like that set of mole grips or plumbing pliers uh, up and right up. I'd say them plumbing ones are probably better for this because they're uh, uh, my bar set, unfortunately. Uh, then we're going to get wire there, get on back at connector. And this is hard, but it's getting it in here. You've got to get some pressure onto it, get it lined up pretty decent. Uh, 
It's not too bad when there's only one wire in. But then we're gonna get on. I'm just gonna get a bit of a squeeze nice and gently. It popped. It has pushed connect fruit back a bit, but it's not a big deal. So I'll tighten them back up. There we go. Now you've got to do is just push it back through a bit. A bit of rump fog wire there. That's in, it's dropped in nicely. It's free, it's moving how it's meant to be. Now we've got to do is get grips onto this bit. Pull it out, boom, and that's it, it's done. That's the good thing about these connectors, they spin, so it, it gives you play to move about, it's not all stiff. The battery ones aren't there, they're fixed. Uh, another little tip is the split pins there. If you find that you've closed them while you're doing this route, just get a screwdriver and widen them up. Or if you find your batteries come disconnected a lot while you aren't bashing, just uh, like I say, just get a pin or a screwdriver or something in it and, and get a pop out. But that's your end product, you've got your connectors in. It's on nice and soft, it's not going to pop off. Uh, you can put a bit of heat shrink over it, whatever you want. But then you've gone from that connector to that connector, I'll level them up and you really haven't lost that much cable and same with that you haven't lost much cable so you've still got flexibility to move it about I hope it uh, helps some guys out whoever's using these connectors cheers